Hey guys, I'm Cody, and you're buying Past Life Pro, and for this admittedly extreme idea for a tutorial, I thought I'd teach you how to film, just like I did, a 360 degree VR, meaning virtual reality, 8K cinematic clip in Minecraft using the replay mod for the purpose of YouTube. We'll be going through all the steps exactly as I made them, with the exception of repeating old mistakes. If anything, my hope is to get you, in a timely fashion, to be on level footing knowledge-wise with myself. At least by the time I'm done with you, it won't be what you know hooking you back, uh, just your system, which for all I know might work just fine. But the test to see if you're able to film this sort of thing, that's on you. My friends, better listen up. There is a lot of commentary ahead. Let's get started. Step 1. Here's how you start off. Enter your world and locate the place you want to film. Turn your render distance to extreme or perhaps far to load in all the land around the place you chose. When it comes to having a 360 degree view, it's best to load in all the land around the camera, mainly so your viewer has a lot of things to feast their eyes on. If your camera is set to move around somewhere, just be aware of new chunks possibly rendering in or disappearing, if you're critical of that sort of thing. For myself, to remedy this issue, since I am extremely critical of that, I've opted to keep the camera moving up or down. Doesn't mean that won't change later, but it's the least hassle. Further ahead in step 3, when you're looking at the world you were in inside Replay Viewer, Replay Mod will only generate the land you yourself rendered, so the point is, make sure you have all the land you want visible. Step 2. Now that all the land you're after is rendered in around your soon-to-be camera, it's time to go slash game mode 3 or just put your character out of view somewhere. What you're doing for this step is letting Replay Mod know how long in terms of time you want access to. Are you wanting to film a full daylight scene like I did? Well, to do that, you'd be expected to leave your character somewhere from morning all the way to sunset. For a shot with barely any time passed, you wouldn't leave your character somewhere for that long, but that's all up to you. Leave the world when you've served the full time you're after. Step 3. Access Replay Viewer When everything's fully loaded, double click the most recent save. Oh and yes, it is worth noting that I'll be putting together an in-depth tutorial on Replay Mod soon. But for now, I'll just be going over specifically the tools you're in need of knowing to create your 360 degree VR AK masterpiece. Before we set down our camera travel points as well as our time points, we need to locate the time of the shot you want to film in. Weird I know, but you'll get used to it. One method to finding that time is knowing how long you waited. As for myself in my cinematic, I waited a full daylight cycle, so I probably waited somewhere around 10 minutes. So I'd subtract 10 minutes with the total time that the world was open, and I'd narrow things down from there, just as you see me doing. If you didn't already catch on, the top rectangle is what houses the entire time span of the world. The yellow pointer is where we're putting ourselves currently in time. As you would expect, I'm looking to put the pointer where I want the shot to start in terms of time. As for that speed box on the left, it only affects your playback, not the ending product video. So maybe you want to catch a player in the act or film a fast moving bat. Slowing down time to a crazy amount might help you figure out exactly when you want to start your shot. Then there's always speeding up time for equally beneficial means. Okay, I'm good to go. Now let's focus on the bottom rectangle. Here is where you add in your keyframe of position as well as your keyframe of time. If you're familiar with close to any editing software, then you shouldn't have any trouble understanding. Though if you're the opposite, uh, just try keeping up. Clicking this button here sets down a point for position, and the other gives you a point for time. I click the first button and second one. I want this shot to go for 2 minutes, so I position my bottom yellow pointer over to the 2 minute mark. From here, I put my camera at its ending position. I click the first button. When it comes to time, I drag the top yellow pointer to the end of the duration of when I was doing nothing. I click the second button. From here, I can play back and adjust my time and position keyframes using this play button here. Step 4. 
Now this is where you devote your time and energy to getting all the chunks you want loaded in. Doing this step after you set up your keyframes means you won't have to set them up while working with terrible FPS, since that's likely what will come about after you've finished. Oh and yes, do not under any circumstances push any of the play buttons. This will make your chunks reload and you'd have to start over. The importance of this has to do with when you go to render within replay mod, which is our next step. The mod will remember the land you purposely loaded in. If you skip this step, you'll likely have loads of chunks rendering in while your camera is being recorded. Step 5. Click the Render Camera Path button. Okay, I'm going to give you your settings for your 360 degree VR 8K objective. Change your rendering method to Equal Rectangular Render. Encoding presets. Change to MP4 Custom Bitrate. As for your video resolution, go with 7168 and 3584. Video bitrate. I went with 70 last time, though I didn't do too much testing, so you might want to see what best works for you. Video frame rate. YouTube at the moment can't pull off 8K 60fps, so go with 30, like I did. For output file, it's just choosing the location for your MP4 video file. Render name tags. If you have your character in view and you don't want to see their name tag, then I'd recommend unchecking this box. I'm going to skip the two next ones. Inject 360 degree metadata. I'd always have this checked, mainly so I can upload the file directly to YouTube to see if I like it. Since there is no way I'm able to play a video at this resolution, as well as 360 degree stuff, on VLC or media player. Command line settings. Okay, here's where if you didn't have explicit direction, you would likely feel pretty confused right now. So that the replay mod's renderer can do its job, you'll need a file called FFmpeg, of which I've laid out its download link in the description of this video. When downloaded, if all is well, you should have a .zip file looking like this one. Here's what I did to set this up. Step 1. I removed the FFmpeg file from within the .zip. Step 2. I renamed it to simply FFmpeg. Step 3. I didn't want the files to ever get lost, so I put FFmpeg in my documents folder. Alright, now that we have the FFmpeg in place, it's time to link it with Replay Mod. Go to the FFmpeg folder, and then to Bin. Exactly as I do, move your cursor to the directory, click on the blank space, and type backward slash ffmpeg.exe. Copy all the text, and go to Replay Mod. In the small box to the left of the larger one, delete absolutely all the text inside. Paste the directory that you copied into that box. Alright, you can pat yourself on the back now. This step stumps nearly everyone, so be happy you got through this in a timely manner. As for the text on the larger box to the right, I never messed with this, so I won't worry about discussing it in this tutorial. Though I may look into it a bit more when I'm producing my replay mod dedicated Cinema Mods tutorial. That's everything. When you are sure you're good to go, that's when you press render. My friends, those were all the steps to creating your 360 degree VR 8K clip using replay mod. Though we're not done yet, what about working with this crazy video? Chances are you're not looking to simply add the raw 8K 360 degree video to YouTube and call it a day. You want to add an intro, outro, text, commentary, effects, etc. Well to do that, you need an editing software that can support this kind of resolution. As for myself, I ended up going primarily with After Effects because Sony Vegas and Premiere Pro just couldn't support the resolution. If you don't own After Effects, then this may very well be the nail in the coffin, but who knows? I'm not at all sure about Final Cut Pro or other editing softwares of that caliber. Do tell me if there's one out there that can support the res, because I'd love to know. Ah well, back to business. For you, you used After Effects to create your video and now you'd like to render it. Well, since After Effects CC is incapable of creating an MP4 file, your only option is to go with .mov. And to do that, you need to download QuickTime. Link is in the description. Why can't you use .avi? Well, to get this video to show up as 360 degrees, meaning you are able to turn your camera around and look at things, you'll need to download a software known as Special Media Metadata Injector. Link is also in the description.
This software can only read .mp4 and .mov, so that's why you only have a single option for After Effects. So yeah, you would use QuickTime, just like I did. Then, in the format options, you'd go with a codec that best works for you. I chose Animation, and not H.264, because that codec just simply didn't support the 2x1 8K resolution I had. Once rendered, the size of the video will come out quite large, so how I got around this was I used my compression software called Handbrake. Link is also in the description! I'm not really interested in touching so much on Handbrake vocally, so what I choose to show you on screen is what you get. After your video is compressed to a file size that you're fine with uploading, this is where you'd inject the metadata. Open up Special Media Metadata Injector. Click Open. Find the file you want to inject the metadata into. The software should do this automatically, but make sure the My Video is Spherical 360 box is checked. From here, click Inject Metadata and click Save when you've located a place to put the soon-to-be-injected file. The process shouldn't take long, but once you see the injected video is the same size as the original, then chances are you're good to go. My friends, your last step is uploading the video to YouTube. That is fully how this task is carried out. If this extremely long video of me teaching you how to film a 360 degree VR 8K cinematic clip using Replay Mod for YouTube tutorial was of any use to you, then do hit that like button. And before you go, don't forget to check out my channel for some more amazing Minecraft tutorials, some pro quality cinematics, and a bunch of other videos that you shouldn't miss. Anyways, I'm Cody, and this is Past Life Pro, where creativity is always a part of my life as it will in time be for yours. Alright, see you guys.